a brand new arc has officially begun in One Punch Man, and right off the bat we're getting some insane reveals here from Blast, indicating to us that he is fully aware of Saitama's full power. That alone should be super exciting for you, but we also got some news that we're going to be getting another chapter next week, instead of waiting the usual two weeks per chapter, and that's because for those of you that aren't aware, it was announced by One and Murata that this entire arc, this entire ninja arc, will be completely redrawn and redone. So you can essentially delete the last like eight chapters from your mind as you're gonna see in this chapter things change narratively big time they probably didn't like how the ninja arc was flowing before and much of the fan base was actually echoing that same feeling you have to admit that the original ninja arc didn't flow very well and it seemed like it was just dragging on like there was all these chapters with not much actually happening so one and Murata went like all right you know what this isn't good enough we're gonna go back to the drawing board and do this all over again Murata himself even tweeted out that he is committed Committed to making the fights in this arc as epic as possible. And we know how good Murata could be with drawing fight scenes, so I am very excited to see it. But kicking off this chapter, it starts almost exactly the same way as the ninja arc kicked off in the previous one, where after getting knocked through the ground by Saitama, Sonic is back at his hideout recovering, when he ends up getting jumped by Hellfire and Gale Wind. As you know, their main goals are to kill Flashy Flash and Sonic since they're defectors from the ninja village, but then it turns out that they are also being followed by this other group of ninjas that we come to find out is called the Heavenly Ninja Party. And honestly, this is probably one of my favorite parts of this entire arc because I just think it's so funny, this opening sequence for them, where they each introduce themselves individually as these super redundant names. Names like Violent Force and Chaotic Mayhem are probably a favorite of mine, Slaughtering Massacre, just to name a few. Well, they go to Sonic and say, hey, help us take out Flashy Flash. You're either with us or against us. And it's in your benefit to be with us because that man has finally awakened. We later come to find out that this is Empty Void, who was transformed formed into a monster by God. Whether Empty Void is still going to keep his original design or his original backstory even for this ninja arc, that's still yet to be seen, but apparently he's still the focal point of this arc. But that's the last part of this chapter that remains the same, because everything that comes after this is completely different, completely new content. And in my opinion, some very exciting and groundbreaking content. We switch over to the Hero Association, where Sitch and Blast are meeting Saitama, Flashy Flash, and Monaco, much like the previous version of the arc. But this time, Saitama is a immediately acknowledging Blast as someone that they have met before. He thanks Blast for teleporting them out of the underground base, which of course he's referring to the moment that God was offering them his power when Blast interrupted them and made his very first appearance in the manga. And right away we get verified that Blast does indeed remember Saitama, but he doesn't just remember Saitama's face, because after Saitama thanks him for teleporting them out of the underground base, Blast says, no need to thank me. Your abnormal strength caught my eye at the time too. Taking the initiative to come out here on your own saved me the trouble. So that means even if Saitama didn't come here with Flashy Flash, Blast was going to go out and look for him. He has identified him as the real deal. And we'll get to how he knows this information in a second, but Flashy Flash, of course, being the smug guy that he is, says, oh, you have an interest in Saitama? Well, he has a prior commitment to me as my apprentice, so you definitely can't take him on as your apprentice if you were thinking about it. Which, I mean, Flashy Man, I love you, but come on, shut up. You're like the smallest guy in the room right now. You don't even have a seat at the table. Well, surprisingly, Sitch also acknowledges Saitama because he explains that Blast verified to him that he was the one who actually defeated Monster Garo. Well, Saitama is like, oh yeah, Flashy Flash brought that up too earlier. But honestly, it's all really fuzzy. I don't remember much of what happened. And Sitch starts to freak out. He's like, come on, man, you have to retrace your memory. This is very important. You have to remember what happened. Like, this is a big deal. And Saitama is like, hey, dude, you yelling at me isn't going to make me remember stuff that I just can't remember. The Garo affair has been resolved anyway. You don't need to start huffing and puffing about it. It. And Sitch is still freaking out internally, he's thinking to himself, resolved how preposterous, because he then goes into a flashback where he was meeting with Blast earlier, essentially covering the exact moment that Blast brought up Saitama to Sitch, and revealed to him that he was the one who truly fought and defeated Garo. Because remember, originally after the end of Saitama vs Garo, people just assumed that it was Blast that came in and took him out. So I'm glad Blast is giving credit where credit is due. So Blast is thinking back to the exact moment he witnessed Saitama fighting Garo, and it was the moment that Garo used his gamma ray burst attack on him and he points out as he was witnessing that whole scene that without a doubt the earth was in danger and Sitch is just thinking to himself what the hell is caped baldy who is this guy and blast says i don't know i couldn't see the bottom at all we need to find it out and when blast says bottom i'm not exactly sure what he means by that he might be meaning like the bottom of saitama's well of power or something so he needs to investigate exactly how strong this guy is blast goes on to say that he doesn't sense any malice from saitama though 
though, so there shouldn't be a problem with leaving him at large. Well, Sitch says either way, even if you tried to restrain him, Genos would definitely not stay silent. And one little detail that I want to bring up from the conversation between Blast and Sitch that I feel might get overlooked by a lot of people, considering all these massive reveals that we're getting in the same conversation, is when Blast says that he doesn't sense any malice from Saitama. Now again, it might not seem like a big deal initially, but when you take into consideration Blast powers and where his powers could potentially be from, this might also end up being a pretty big bit of information. Because being able to sense the malice or even the general emotions of another person falls very much in line with an ability that an Esper would have. And for the longest time, I and other fans of the series as well have said that Blast powers stem from him being an Esper. It's possible that Blast represents the absolute epitome of what psychic powers are capable of. Like once you reach the epitome of Esper abilities, you start to tap into dimensional powers or just general fourth dimensional powers. One of the reasons I believe this is that when we got the backstory of Psychos and when we learned of the moment she unlocked the third eye ability, we found out that she was able to witness the future and see God. Now knowing that God lives in this fourth dimensional space, it would make sense since she can reach that fourth dimensional space herself to see God, that she had ascended to some form of higher power that psychics can reach. She did this mentally while Blast could have done this physically, being able to dish out gravity abilities and teleporting and stuff like that. I don't know, just some food for thought. But then Sitch cuts away to the bigger problem here. He asked Blast that with this crisis averted, meaning the fight between the heroes and Monster Garo, the prophecy crisis has ended, obviously alluding to the ever-lingering prophecy from Lady Shababawa where she witnessed the end of the world. Well, Blast responds by saying no, rather the real deal has just begun, because in truth, a greater threat than Garo is imminent. And we don't get exact clarification on what he means by this, I mean we can assume that he's talking about God himself, because as far as I know, God is the only known entity out there that would be anywhere near as strong as Cosmic Fear Garo. He would obviously be much stronger than him because he's the one that gave him that much power in the first place. You could make the argument that he's talking about Empty Void here, because since it's technically not clear if Blast remembers everything from that Monster Garo versus Saitama fight, at the moment we just have to kind of assume that he only witnessed the Gamma Ray Burst. So of course he didn't witness Garo matching Saitama blow for blow, including his serious punches, so. so you could kind of make the argument that Blast is under the false impression that that man or Empty Void is a much bigger threat than Garo. We all know that that's definitely not the case at least from what we've seen. Maybe with these massive redraws and redoing of this arc, you know, maybe the ninja leader gets built up to be even more powerful than he was. Like he just gets put on an entirely new tier of power than we saw in the original arc. That's where the chapter ends though, so let me know what you guys think about this new revised version of the ninja arc so far. Yeah, it's a short chapter, but again, we're getting another one next week, so this is kind of a two-parter. I, for one, already think that this new version of the arc is better than the original, just because we got this awesome reveal at the end of this chapter. But yeah, that's my opinion. Opinion, let me know yours in the comments. That is it for this video. Have an absolutely wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, whatever, and I'll see you guys in the next video.